Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today our church is preparing for, the, for entering into the holy and great land. It's the Sunday so-called of forgiveness. And when we are trying to make peace to everyone, we're trying, first of all, to ask forgiveness from those that we, either with word or with deeds, it bitter them. And of course to forgive if others did anything against us. And also our church today is commemorating the casting out of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, from paradise. Remember our great and loving God created Adam and Eve to rejoice in his bosom, to rejoice in his grace. Someone would question why did he create man in the first place? There are many answers that people would come up with. Some would say that, uh, well, he was alone and he, he figured out that he needs someone, but it wasn't the place because we know that he has the full man, full fulfillment in all the things. He doesn't need anything. But he felt that he needed to share his grace and his love with some, someone and then is when he decided to create someone according to his own image and likeness, like him, to become gods by grace. This is why he created us. Not to cast us out, but to rejoice in his grace, in his fullness, in his love. But see, the disobedience of his commandments from all you can eat, not from this, led us out of his grace. And now, when we are talking about fasting, many of our Christians said, oh, you know, we have uh, health issues, we have, we are finding a lot of excuses. Not that there aren't people that don't have issues. There are people with issues, and we know that. And the church is helping those. But there are people that just are looking to find excuses. Remember Adam, Adam and Eve, where they were cast out from paradise. They were crying bitterly and looking at the entrance. But God put two angels to guard it. Why they were crying? Because the, their cry wasn't a cry of repentance. They didn't repent. They didn't say, God forgive us. They were crying because they lost that beauty. Not because they repented. I'm pretty sure and all the fathers agree on this. If they would ask for forgiveness, God will reinstall them. Will forgive them. But they did not. Remember what Adam said. The woman you gave me, she made me eat. The woman said, the snake. And so on and so forth. So this is how we are. And today, oh, it's not my fault. It's my wife's fault. It's my children's fault. It's my neighbor's fault. It's my uh, co-worker's fault. And so on and so forth. It doesn't stop. Always somebody's fault. It's not us. We are the best. We know everything. We're, we're good people. Right? And this is how we are departing ourselves from our Creator, from our loving God. Because we're always trying to find excuses. We're always find, trying to find 
somebody's fault, not us. We're never at fault. We're the best in everything. And that's why we are living in this misery, a miserable life, because we never cannot accept that we are at fault, that what is happening is because of our poor decisions, of our poor choices. Yes. The same thing with Adam and Eve. They make a poor decision, a poor choice. And this led them out of the grace of God. But as the old Adam shut the door of paradise for us, the new Adam, the incarnated Christ, opened it wide for us. Through his sacrifice, through his crucifixion, he opened it again for us. He opened this path. He traced the path for us back to the paradise, back to the place for we were created. And now, it's again in our hand to make the right decision, to follow Christ through his commandments, through his mysteries. And today's gospel is talking us through the mouth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ about forgiveness. How we are forgiving those who trespass against us. Are we open to that? Because we know there are parents that are not talking to their children, their children not talking to their parents for tens of years. Brethren are not talking to each other for tens of years. Or even they are dying, departing this temporal life, and they never forgive each other. But look at his words, what he's saying. If you do not forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. So it's that simple. If we want to be forgiven and inherit eternal life, first we have to forgive. But forgiving means to forget also. Whatever was in the past, forget about it. Turn the page and start, it, start again from zero with a blank page. And here I want to share with you a beautiful story, a true story, that hopefully we will learn something out of it. There was a man in a village that was accused of murder. There was five people that brought witness against him that he killed that person. And he was condemned to 30 years of prison. Strict regime. He was claiming that he didn't do that. That he's not guilty. But no one believed him. So he was condemned. He was put in jail. The first five, six months, he was very troubled. Because he felt the injustice, and he could not find peace. But at that jail, once a month, an Orthodox priest was going and doing the Divine Liturgy once a month. And at some point after six, six months, he decided to go to take confession and to speak to that priest. He took confession and he told the priest that he didn't do that. The priest gave him the Holy Scripture and some other books, prayer books. And so he started reading. He started learning the Word of God. In one year, this person was a completely different person. He was living in God and with God. He was breathing with God. He learned the prayer. He was spraying. He, he reached such a high level. And the priest was helping him. And honestly, he believed him that he is unguilty. And he even tried with some lawyers to help him. 
But it was impossible because there was five people that was claiming that he was the one that killed that person. After 19 years, because of his behavior, uh, they freed him, they liberated him. And when he went back to his village, the villagers didn't want to see him, to receive him, cursing him, and he left. He went to a near, into a nearby town, and he started working there as a carp carpenter, but living a true Christian life. And he was praying, and uh, he said, I forgive all of them, those that accused me, and the one that actually did murder, I don't know who he is, but may God have pity on them, and may God grant them all the blessing. May God not punish them. He was praying for them. So after a while, through that priest, he, he had a spiritual daughter with that priest. She was 42 years old. She studied theology, and she was teaching uh, faith in school. She was unmarried. And he told her about that prisoner that now was working as a carpenter in that city. And she went, she found him, and she asked him to marry her. Not him, but she asked him to marry her. They got married. They, got, they had two beautiful kids. Very blessed family, living a true Christian life. After a while, a person from that village got very sick. They went to different hospitals. Nobody could find what was the problem. But he was literally screaming out of pain. They sent him back home. They said, we cannot find anything. We don't know what is something that we cannot explain. So going back, he was screaming out of pain. And he started saying that, I'm the one that I murdered that guy and I paid a lot of money to those the other four ones to bring forward witnesses for them that was a political issue and the poor guy he just happened to pass by when we murdered the other one and not that he saw but that was the perfect person to blame and of course it got to this man's ears and he went to the village the atmosphere was very heavy imagine so all the villagers now were cursing that man that were, was crying from the bed and because they felt guilty because they accused him they were hiding when they saw him walking. They were hiding. They didn't want even to look in his face, his eye, eyes. He went to that man's home. When he saw him, he was frozen. He stopped even screaming. And he went to him, hugged him and said, my brother, I forgive you. Because of you, I got to meet Christ, to meet his church and his mistress. And I thank you for that. And he said, and I wish for you that you will get to meet him also. May God bless you. And he left. So this man, as I said, after he lived, he continued to live this Christian and blessed life. God blessed him with many gifts. He departed this life on the age of 80 in 1999. Not too long ago. And that priest that was in prison was assisting when he passed away. 
And the priest is saying that not only this man at his last breath, but he also, the priest, was seeing angels and archangels that came to take his soul. And the man from the bed said, I am unworthy for this greatness. And with these words, he left. Life eternal. So only from this you can understand. This was the power of forgiveness. This was the power of love. And now looking in our days, in our lives, each one of us, take a look. Are we even close to this man? If somebody just says a word, not accusing us of a mur murder, right? We cannot take it. We'll take revenge. And we'll, either we will start cursing or other stuff, right? What is our love? How do we forgive? See, this is what the Lord wants from us. He is, He gave us the example. When He was spot on His face, beaten up, crucified, what He was doing, Lord, forgive them, they don't know what they are doing. And we think that we know what we are doing? No, we don't. So that's why, my dear ones, we have, before we do anything, before we open our mouth, we have to reflect on everything. And first, to remember his passion. To remember his cross. To remember his sacrifice for us. And our goal, our reason why we are here on earth. Our goal is to become like him. To reach theosis. That's why we are here. We're not here to judge each other, to hate each other. And this is the moment that we have to start reflecting on this and in, implement his teaching and work on the virtues to improve the virtues which are the gift of his greatness. Love, patience, obedience, true repentance, and so many others. So let us work on this. Let us become the true image of Christ. Let us become true Christians, true daughters, daughters and sons of Mo the Most High God. And let us follow Him step by step. And let us open again the doors, the gates of paradise. And let us dwell in there. Let us try to get in there as families, as communities to rejoice with the Most High God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.